Uh, let's start with intro. Um, so that's that's when I do. we're going to talk about more of the experience. A lot of people talk about creating an app and how, what do I put in the app? Can I put in iOS? Can I put it in Android? I want to talk more about the other aspects of creating creating an experience. Right? You have to think about the back end, the data, um, how people how the app will connect. Is it fast? Is it responsive? Uh, does it run everywhere? Um, and as, as I ask uh, JavaScript folks here, uh, is it easy to build? If, if I know just JavaScript and enough, uh, a little bit of everything else, can I build a, a mobile app that, that I can get uh, to work uh, by myself, even if it's a weekend project? So um, my name is Carlos Santana. That's my Twitter handle. Um, uh, if, uh, I came from Puerto Rico in 2002, so I've been living in Raleigh. Uh, any of you guys outside from Raleigh visiting? Okay, cool, welcome. Uh, I've been living here 13 years, and I'm so, for, so far very happy. Uh, I have a, a wife and 11-year-old daughter. Um, went to NC State, got my master's there. So any Wolfpacks in the house? Okay, don't be shy. There's, there's also other people. Um, I'm a uh, committer for Apache Cordova. Cordova is the same thing as PhoneGap. That's what we're going to discuss today. Um, and I'm an Ionic fan. So I, I found that um, uh, I learned Angular. Ionic is an Angular framework. So I learned uh, Angular through Ionic. So uh, very interesting project. And I uh, have uh, got to meet uh, the people behind it. Um, and they're pretty cool. Um, that's, uh, if you want to follow me, Look for the guy in the hat. That's not me. Uh, that's the other one. So if you hit this one, it's not me. So search for the other, high, other guy in the hat. Uh, that's me. Uh, C. Santana um, was taken, so I added PR there. Um, architecture. I don't have a lot of slides. So I, I like to build, uh, deal more with code than slides. So this is a short, short version um, of what we're going to build today. Is basically we're going to have a, a social app where you can send messages to your friends. Everybody's in a group chat. Um, everybody has a different phone. They have Android or iOS or Android or iOS. Can, that's kind of the landscape um, in their market. Uh, I'm going to talk about three technologies: uh, Node.js, uh, Cloudant, which is a CouchDB-based database, uh, NoSQL or document-based. And if we have time, we can talk about Watson, uh, one of the things that we're doing in IBM. And all that will run in the cloud. So I couldn't leave an IBM presentation without mentioning cloud, right? Cloud needs to be everywhere. And um, our cloud is named IBM Bluemix. That's where we, uh, we have our, all our um, cloud services. Um, so we, the first technology we're going to talk about is uh, WebSockets. WebSockets is not where RTC. Uh, WebSockets um, help, it's an HTTP base. Uh, the problem that it's solving is HTTP wasn't created for um, this type of apps that we want to build. It always was about client re request response, so there's always a request, there's a response, so the client has to start the communication. There's nothing uh, uh, when the HTTP uh, what, what wasn't bi-directional. So the, the things that we want to build are real-time apps, apps that uh, are connected fast, like multi, multiplayer games. Uh, in this case, we're going to do an instant messaging app, a very simple app, where if somebody sends a message, you want to quick, get, get it quickly. It's the same thing if somebody's drawing something in their, their browser, everybody wants to see the, the, the drawing um, or the pointer moving as the person speaks, right? Um, that's the type of application. So WebSockets is a, it's a standard. Uh, that is established and is supported in almost, I think every, every browser, every latest, uh, la la the latest version of every browser supports WebSockets, and I will say even N minus one supports WebSockets. Um, can, can I use dot, dot com is a good website. If you Google for can I use, it will give you all the browsers that support that. And for those that don't, I'll give you another project that will help in that area. Um, like I said, WebSockets is, is, is better for uh, real-time apps because you have to establish a communication so that first client opens a request to the server and it leaves that socket open. Uh, by leaving the socket open, the server can start communication back to that client and start sending messages. Uh, so it's a message-driven 
architecture. And then the, the APIs are very web-like. Web you listen on an event and you, you react on an event. Um, so you have a callback in there. So that's, that's the beauty of, of WebSockets. And again, WebSockets is not WebRTC. WebRTC is a different standard, uh, which is more related to real-time communication like sound and video. WebSockets is it's, uh, a more basic uh, protocol. So WebSockets in action. Uh, this is a Node, uh, Node app, Node.js app. It's using the NPM package WS. Um, and as you can see um, on the right side is the, the web client. Um, it's just uh, establishing a connection, a WebSocket connection um, to, to the server. Uh, one, one thing that, that WebSockets do is um, it's res the responsibility of the server to deal with cross-domain. So the browser will, doesn't care what, what domain you're connecting to. Um, once you establish a connection on the other end for, for the server, it's very simple. You listen on a connection, you listen on a message. And then to send a message back to that same connection, you just send uh, ws.send. So I, I would say with 12, 12 lines of code, you actually have a real app, uh, real time app uh, up and working. The other version of it is um, Socket.io. Socket.io is kind of what most people use. It uses the package uh, WS WebSockets, but it's, it's more reliable because it deals with a lot of things that um, if you use WebSockets, you use it kind of like raw, raw metal, um, like raw APIs. Uh, Socket.io helps you because it has a nice API of broadcasting to all clients that are connected. Um, it also helps you for the heartbeat. So when sockets are, are open, you need kind of a heartbeat to let that server know that, hey, I'm still alive, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a client. With the just plain sockets, you have to build that in. So the, this project is very, very popular because of that. And the, the last thing that um, most people use it is because if you don't have a browser or a web view that supports web sockets, they do long pooling. So they, they will pull back to the server. So you as a developer, you don't have to think about like all these constraints. It, socket IO solves that for you. And there's, um, web sockets are implemented in other web server technologies, not Node.js, it's not uh, Java and other ones support this. Um, so like I, like I said, socket IO is kind of a platform as a, as a service solution. Um, like web sockets is supported everywhere. Uh, I think I mentioned all the other properties of web socket. Um, if you're going to go like use this in a business production. Um, we have other types, uh, like SaaS solutions. So if you want a SaaS solution, like more than 100, 100 devices, uh, maybe you don't want to manage uh, all the messaging and queue the messaging and catch the messaging um, and have um, fast responses around the world, um, I would recommend a data stream network. And uh, PubNub is some, it's a service that IBM collaborated with our cloud, so you can get a, a, uh, that service through IBM Bluemix um, or directly from them. But if you're using Bluemix uh, as a cloud funding app, it's very easy to get an account, connect it, and then use it inside your, your uh, runtime. So we have different runtimes. You can be Node.js or, or Java uh, or PHP. We have a, a bunch of runtimes. So I recommend to look into PubNub if you're going serious of building like a, like a real, real app um, for, for a large, large network or devices, uh, or if you want to go around the world. Um, but for simple, simple projects, Socket.io is a good starting point until you get some MVP app, right? Something that works, something that you can show value that you can iterate on your user experience. Um, and then it's swapping the APIs is like very, very easy because it's, it's at the end of the day, uh, PubNub supports the browser, so you're using WebSockets. The, the browser doesn't have anything else that is magic to support WebSockets. It's, it's built into the, into the, into the browser. Um, Apache Cordova is the other side of the application that we're going to show today. Is a, there was a, actually a, a very good uh, talk today. If you missed it, uh, they might have a recording from John Wargo. He's back there. Um, you can say hi to him. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, actually many books, on, on Apache Cordova. Uh, Apache Cordova, is a, is if you, you may know it by PhoneGap, uh, allows you to build um, apps using, we, we put, uh, a lot of people put HTML5. It's basically JavaScript. It's a JavaScript API framework. Um, the, the thing that it gives you is kind of tooling 
packaging a web view and a JavaScript API to native, native APIs from, from the phone. It doesn't give you that other things that other native SDKs give you, like UI controls for lists, for buttons, and things like that. And that's, that's where, where people get confused about Apache Cordova saying, well, where's, where's the rest? I just, I just got this, and where, where, where do I build the, the, why my apps are slow, or this is HTML, but it's for the mobile, so how do I make it look like a native app? Uh, where Cordova is very good is being a wrapper. So other tooling, like I'm going to show today, Ionic um, and other frameworks, use Cordova as a building block. So it's a par part of the Apache Foundation uh, open source project and uh, direct access to the native API. So this is something that other projects are taking advantage. So Cordova is kind of a, a, a good base for other, other frameworks to build on, on top of it. Uh, PhoneGap and Cordova slow. So who, who have heard that PhoneGap apps are slow or have that myth? Okay, I, I heard too. Um, and for certain applications, they are, but for most applications, they're not. And, and there's many factors to it. One uh, big one is devices are fast. So the technology didn't, uh, about web views or the web views uh, embedded with the phone didn't get faster. Actually, the phones got faster. I, I got a 6S, and it has a dual core, two gigs of RAM. So people are, st are starting to get phones that are faster and not, not notice, noticing that. Uh, another breakthrough that, that the Cordova uh, project did was pluggable web views. Um, right now, the, the crosswalk is out, it's released. It's for Android, so this is a project from Intel. So Intel created a pluggable web view called Crosswalk and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a web view that is built with the latest Chrome. They package it, and then you can run it on old Android uh, devices. So for example, Android 4.0, 4.1, if you use, use the system web view, it's very slow, and it doesn't have the new APIs that you may want to use. But with Crosswalk, you will not use that web view, and you will use the Crosswalk across all these uh, Android phones, and it will be fast, and the API will be the same and with the latest. So that's kind of a breakthrough that we did. So you will start seeing a lot of Cordova apps just using Crosswalk by default. Um, another one that is kind of almost released, um, it's, there's plugins out there, it's WK, WK WebView. It's for iOS, so the, the WebView from mobile Safari is faster than the WebView that you get inside a Cordova app. So with WK WebView, it's a kind of a next generation UI WebView for iOS. And the same concept applies. You can run the system web view, UI web view, or you can run this, third, uh, this uh, alternative uh, WK web view, which is WebKit based, and it's the new one. Is Apple is going to uh, go with, with that one going forward, and I guess the other one, they're going to deprecate it. And the last one is uh, performance and optimization. There's uh, a lot of like, techniques that people are using to create web views. They take into account that they're running on a phone, the feature detection, so they make apps faster. Um, Ionic is, a, is an Angular-based framework. Um, I, I would say that there's a lot of examples and out-of-the-box um, tutorial uh, uh, components or CSS or JavaScript that, uh, at least for me, it made very easy uh, to learn Angular. And I'm not an Angular expert, but I can create uh, a, a sa decent sample apps using Ionic without being a, an Angular expert, because there's a lot of declarative things that you do. You do a, an HTML, so you say view model uh, kind of framework. Um, and, and the good thing that is, uh, that's where the HTML5 comes in. That's why I didn't say Cordova is HTML5. These are the framework that builds on top of Cordova and gives you the HTML5. So um, Ionic has different uh, tools. Uh, the framework is one of them that you use at runtime. Another one is the CLI. So the CLI uses the Cordova CLI uh, to create the apps. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, a quick demo of um, the, the server first. So for the server, um, if you, um, I'll have these slides and, and with the links um, available. So I have a GitHub project um, that is, is a structure as a Ionic app or Cordova app. You have your Dodo folder, uh, you have your hooks folder, you have your platform folders. Um, actually, the platform and the plugins are empty. But um, the, the thing that I did with this project is it can be also be used as a, as a website. Uh, so the same code that runs on the website will run on the, on the phone. 
And you, to get it up and running, and to the fastest way to, to try it out, you can go to my GitHub um, project and just click this button. Um, it will deploy, it will open um, a, in Bluemix. Bluemix is, uh, you can get a free account uh, in Bluemix and click the, the deploy button. I'm not going to do that because uh, the demo got, got may be against me, but I'll show you a, a short video that I did uh, early today. Um, and it can take three, from three to five minutes. Uh, basically what it's doing is taking that GitHub project, it has a manifest file, and doing a git clone, and instantiating a Node.js service. Um, and in this version that I upgraded recently, uh, it also has a declaration for uh, Cloudant, which is a CouchDB database or Couch, CouchDB base uh, database. And, and literally in three minutes, uh, which this one took uh, around three minutes, you will have a live URL. Um, you, uh, I didn't show that, but you give it a name, and then my case will be ionic.mybloomix.net. Uh, and, and you can walk out of here if you do it now. You'll be uh, walking out. With a with an ionic website that can that can work, um, so that's that's the end of it. Um, you you can you can click view your app, which will show you in the Bluemix dashboard. I can show that, um, or you can edit the code. One good thing that um, I like about this, not because this is IBM, but I guess it does. But other other aspects, uh, other products that do this is they you can have a DevOps uh, workflow where you can change the code. Push the code into the Git um, repository, and you know, in a minute, that code will be live and running in that in that in that uh, uh, HTTP website. Uh, other other uh, tools do that, and at least for my workflow, what I do is um, either have two branches, one dev and one production, and when I'm ready to put something in production, I just git push my changes to the to the production branch, and it's live. Um, in this particular case, what I have is a GitHub, so I do development on GitHub, and when I'm ready to have the app up and running, I just push the changes into the Git that I get for free uh, through Bluemix, and my app is up and running. So uh, let's say I, I did this. Um, I can show you uh, the dashboard that I have, and that this, this is the one I did at launch. So I got, a, I got an app in here, um, and then if you run this app, uh, and you guys can can join if your mobile phone or, or your, your laptop, uh, you will see that uh, you can join the conversation in here. And I just uh, took a picture, and that's the other aspect I'm going to show. So I can say, uh, hello, uh, in here, if I open another window, I'm doing with time. Um, I can go to that website and chat with you guys. Um, it can be Carlos Deaf. I can log in as Carlos Legal. And I can have a, a chat app uh, in, in five minutes up and running. So uh, anyone can tell me who are these uh, avatars from what movie? Yeah, Ghostbusters. For some reason, the only guys like to use the, the Ghostbusters avatars. Um, so it's instant. So this is going through this HTTPS. Uh, one thing that I did, I forced HTTPS for this connection. And one of the reasons is because uh, the new iOS uh, 9 or Xcode 7, by default, is requiring you to have HTTPS. And I will see, uh, I will, we will see in the coming months of years, every, everything moving to HTTPS. So I got HTTPS for free, and in five minutes it's up and running, and I can I can test stuff. Um, so uh, that's that's an instant chat uh, that you can have um, up and running in in, and the 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 code is very small. If you want to see the code? Um, I will use Visual Studio Code. It's, it's a good uh, text editor. Um, I'll show you here. It's the server.js. Um, let me see if I can show this. Cannot make it bigger for some reason. Um, but the the code that I showed at the beginning is is this it's the same code. It's it's not more code than uh, when I I get a message. So there's things that you can detect. Like you see some chat apps that says typing, like somebody's typing something. Um, that's that's in here. 
you can you can detect those those changes and send it. But uh, the gut of it is about these ten lines. On on when you get a message, you go ahead and broadcast it to to everyone. Uh, you broadcast broadcast um, that emit the new message to everyone. And another thing that I'm doing here is if the message contains a picture, I'm going to save it to the database. So that way I can analyze it later or make it available offline. So that's, that's the next thing I'm going to show. And uh, with CouchDB or, or Cloud, and there's a NPM package called, um, I think it's Cloudant, if I have it here, yeah. So if you look in NPM for Cloudant, uh, it's very easy to use the database. Uh, you get an instance of your cloud and you, we use Cloud Foundry, which is the open source um, project to host our services in the cloud. And you, you get your credentials from, from cloud services. So this is not IBM proprietary, this is Cloud Foundry, a Cloud Foundry app. Um, so you can just take this, this code and deploy it to an, maybe another cloud provider that, that is Cloud Foundry um, um, compatible. Um, so. I have a, 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 like I did, what that deployment did, it was a database. I can save that image with a simple command. In this case, I'm just doing a db.insert and inserting that data and saving it to Cloudant. Uh, so that's the Node.js uh, portion of it. Um, in terms of the Ionic app, um, this same code has the Ionic app, so if I do um, Ionic, platform ls, Let's see if it gives me the information. Um, it, tells, it tells me that I have a old version of the Ionic app, um, CLI, but you can see I have Ionic, um, I have Android and iOS. Those are the Cordova platforms that I added to it. If I do Ionic uh, plugin ls, um, these are some plugins that I added to the to the to the um, uh, to the project. So I have the camera, I have console, which is comes by default. A white list uh, allows Android to get connections to the to the internet. Um, as you can see here, I have SQLite storage. So uh, someone in the previous talk was asking, like, how do you, how do you store information if you want to have, make it available offline to the phone? Um, SQLite is a good a good storage solution. Uh, it provides web, web SQL, JavaScript APIs, and then um, I have an Ionic uh, plugin keyboard. Um, so if you want to start with Ionic, uh, very simple demo is if you create, let's go to uh, empty directory. Um, if you can type Ionic, um, when you install Ionic, you have to install the Cordova CLI, but uh, you, can use, you can start with either one. You can start with the Cordova CLI and then I Ionic framework or at, Start with Ionic CLI, and then basically that creates your Cordova app uh, with a hello, hello world template of Ionic. So if you do Ionic start, um, let's say side menu, or just just start and the name of the app. Let's see if it can this runs uh, with the internet. And this, uh, we create a Cordova app. Um, I think if you run it on a Mac, it would add you the iOS platform by default. If, um, if you're running on, on, on Windows, um, I think it add Android, but I, I'm not sure. But you can do a platform add iOS or Android, and that will add the, the project. Um, it's taking longer uh, than I thought. Let me see if this finished. We'll let that go, but at, at the end we'll create a, a folder structure like this one. You have a platform folder, a plugin folder. Let me see if you can see that. You guys can see that? Is that better? Uh, a platform folder, you see the Android and the iOS uh, folder. You get the CSS uh, folder. I'm going to show, I um, added a few libraries to the Bower, or you can do Ionic add. Um, so some libraries that I have is, of course, Angular, but I added Moment. Moment.js is a nice uh, JavaScript library I found. Uh, it's basically to print those messages uh, that I show. 
uh, I, that it shows you how long this message was sent, like a day ago, an hour ago, a minute ago, um, and, and it would show you that. Uh, very, very cool. Another one is NG Cordova. NG Cordova is uh, a Angular kind of like shim or, or helper library to allow you to, if you have an Angular app, to it creates services or it gives you services to access the Cordova plugins. Uh, so I use this one for the camera. Uh, NG Storage, um, I, I think I, yeah, NG Storage was a, it's a little shim that allows you to, with Angular, to do local storage or session storage. So I'm using that to save the avatar and the name of the person. Um, and then PouchDB is a, um, a, a, a open source project that allows you to uh, create a database on the browser. Um, so in this case, um, using WebSQL, uh, or you can use IndexedDB. So I'm, I'm configuring um, PouchD, PouchDB with WebSQL. Web and remember that I was using SQLite, so instead of saving the information on the browser when you're running on the phone, uh, you'll be saving it through SQLite on the hard drive. So you have more than five megs. You can have up to, like I don't know, a gig or two gigs uh, of information that it can leave offline on the phone, um, uh, as simple as a, a regular native app, uh, which sometimes that's kind of like the bottleneck. Um, well, the problem that people choose native app for the wrong reasons. Sometimes they choose native because like, well, they have to save files or save a lot of data on a, on a phone. And with JavaScript, at the end of the day, you're building a native app. It's just, um, it's just you're accessing those, that information on that API to the JavaScript API. So that's, that's the only difference. So let's show how that looks. Uh, let's see if this finished. Um, this, this didn't want to finish. I don't know what, what happened. But I'll show you, um, once you create, you create your project, uh, one thing that you can do is run it. Um, the way you run it, um, let's run it here. Um, you can do Ionic Run or Ionic Emulate, um, or you can just open the the Xcode project. And and this is Xcode. So at the end of the day, you're building a a um, native app. But the good thing is you start slow by using web technologies where you feel comfortable. And little by little, you start learning the tools. And little by little, you start learning like what are the, how do Android works, uh, how to use the Android Studio, how to use Xcode. Um, so it gives you capabilities on, on learning how these uh, native SDKs work. Um, if you click uh, play, that should launch uh, the simulator um, or Launch it on my phone. I think it's launching on my phone. Uh, it created for me. So when I do Ionic app from Add, um, so this this version I added a, a little bit of a Halloween theme. So the idea is that I was brainstorming this app with my daughter, and we wanted to create an app uh, that we can put in a TV. So where the guests are taking pictures, so the kids are taking pictures, everybody can see them on the TV uh, real time, and also grandma at home, which is in Puerto Rico, she can also go to a website and see the pictures of the Halloween party. So that was kind of the, the background of why I created this thing, and I said, like, well, why not create a, a demo and, and, a, and a presentation and show people how I did it? Um, and also, also say, share the code. So in this case, I, I will log in, and. As you can see, you see people already uh, sending information. Um, if I, let me see if I can bring that website back um, so I can show the information. See if the demo goats are in my, on my site today. Um, so every, did everybody got that or somebody's logging or nobody's logged in? Um, and then if, um, oh, the other thing is um, I'm using the, the camera plugin. Let me show that code. So um, to use the camera in, in Cordova, it's very simple. I have a service, uh, which is just a JavaScript function. Um, in here, I have, um, where is it? Yeah, so in here, I have, um, 
So if I'm in the web, I'm using the web view, uh, I will take a real picture. If not, I will take a fake picture. But um, this is kind of the API. Um, it's a get picture. You pass the options that you want, and you get back, uh, depending if you're asking for a data URI or file URI, you get that information back um, and then resol resolve it. Um, and that's, that's as simple as it gets to take a picture. Um, for the UI, if you want to show something like, um, for example, um, want to show, you want to take a picture, you can click the, the picture button, click picture, and then take a picture of the room. Say hi. Or John, you want to take a selfie just to finish up? Sorry? What was the question? Sorry? Oh, come over here. So come to the front to take the selfie. Oh, if you're you're using a website, so you don't have the Cordova plugin. So come come here, John. To so in this case, uh, uh, the website doesn't have the the picture, but this one has. So I can take the picture like that, and it has a selfie button. So you, with the Cordova plugin, you can put it. Which which camera do you want to use? Um, so that's what you get uh, when you click the, click the picture. So you can create a, a selfie button. So uh, with a new 3D touch of the iPhones, you can create a, a listener and create a, a selfie button, basically. And uh, we Cordova have uh, that working. And since it wasn't a lot of time today, that's, that's basically it. But uh, just clicking that button will give you a website. If you download the code and run the Ionic CLI, you should be able to put it in your phone. Um, and oh, the, the last thing was, um, let me show this. So uh, since I'm using Cloudlands, I, if I'm disconnected, I can show my apps, the, the photos that I've been using already. Let me see this one. OK, this one. Um, so from today, these are pictures that I save in my cloud and database. So this is, was early today with Chris. Um, and these are, these are photos that are offline. So I can disconnect and I have access to these photos. Um, so, and that's using SQLite and PouchDB. Cloud and is coming, has a, cloud, a SDK called Cloud and Sync for native iOS and native Android. They're working currently, I, I would say in a month or two, they will come out with a Cordova plugin with Cloud and Sync. And that way, uh, you can replace PouchDB with Cloud and Sync. And the reason you want to do that, or you may want to do that, is because it will provide encryption. So if you want to save sensitive information on the phone, encrypted, um, and, um, and, and synchronize. So the API, basically the API to synchronize this data is one command, is, uh, is just replicate. So it's replicating the, the cloud database to a database on your phone. So you as a developer, you're dealing with a database located on the phone, and you cannot tell if it's the remote one or the local one. All the synchronization happens in the background, and all the data gets synchronized. So if I delete something uh, from the cloud, it, when next time it replicates, it will delete it from the local device. So it's a copy of the database on your phone. That's kind of a that, the, the kind of nice to have SDK that you get with this. And I think the last thing that I wanted to show was if you have an app, and you're saving all these pictures. These pictures are structured data. So that's the last piece I want to show with, with Watson. Watson has some uh, visual uh, APIs um, so that you can take a set of pictures, not just one picture. You can do it with one picture, and that's the picture recognition API. This one is the visual insight. So if you have a, a, like an app like here, and you're collecting pictures from, from a group of people or one person, um, for business reasons or for entertainment reasons, you can analyze those pictures and tell you more insight about the unstructured data, in this case, our pictures. So if you go to this website, you can play with the demo and, and select, these are two collections of pictures. Um, I didn't do it with these ones because basically we'll say faces and selfies, right? That's not interesting. 
Um, but in case like, you have a group of folks talking about a certain topic or interested in a certain topic, you can serve ads or you can serve uh, services or you can learn more about your users. What are, what are the people um, having that on structured data uh, talking about? And if you hit it, uh, analyze, basically this API is like one post. You send a post with a archive of the pictures, uh, safe in cloud and safe in, in, in other place. And, and I'll give you inside information of what the, it found on this picture. So uh, there's 46 pictures, uh, where, where around 50 pictures in here. And you can tell that is, there's a lot of outdoors, blue sky, there's animals, there's fashion, um, uh, natural science. So looks like this picture is about maybe a, a somebody going outside, a camping trip, uh, or people that like that type of things. And these are maybe the, the type of persons you want to target a certain ad or a certain feature, uh, or know more about the type of usage they're doing on your app. And again, you get JSON back. It's a REST API. And it's very simple to use. So uh, with that, um, the kind of destructions are in the, in the slides. Uh, these are the software requirements. I didn't want to get into, into it to do uh, Cordova development, but it's very simple. One thing that is interesting, you don't have to pay the $99 anymore to put the, the app on, the, on a physical device on iPhone. Uh, I, Xcode 7 removed that restriction, so now it's nice it's cool to, to try it out things in the real device. Um, this is the demo that I did. Basically, you click one button, and the app is up and running on a website. So you can start, you can send that link to anyone, a family member or something, and you can start chatting or, or, or sharing pictures. Uh, pictures don't have to be saved in the database. The first version uh, of this app, I did it without saving any data, just, just using Node.js as a transport protocol. Um, this is the, the example for the Ionic app um, and the visual insights. And this is just in case there was no uh, Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so that was the other, the other set of pictures that I did. So the other one has a lot of out outdoors and animals and fashion. There was a dog with sunglasses, so yes, fashion. Um, I think that's it. Uh, pics, um, I think there's all pics. There's a conference going on. October 19 and 20, all things open. So you're there, go to that one. Podcasts that I, that I listen, I like to listen to a lot of tech podcasts. Uh, my favorite ones are JavaScript Java, which I'm, I'm a JavaScript uh, like, uh, fanatic. And uh, Avengers in Angular, if you like uh, uh, Angular, this is a good podcast. You will learn a lot of things of going on right now for Angular 2, if you're into that. Uh, blog posts, Raymond Camden now works for IBM. If you follow Raymond, uh, he's a, uh, a blogger and a, a developer advocate for many years in Adobe. Uh, he moved to IBM uh, this year, and he's, he currently works uh, not with me, but he, he, we collaborate a lot because I answer a lot of his questions around the mobile first and the mobile uh, landscape and open source and uh, Cordova and like the technical things that he's writing about. Uh, one thing that uh, John mentioned in his talk is one way of getting help is we're now uh, uh, telling people in the Cordova community to go to Stack Overflow, but at the same time, we're using Slack a lot. So we're trying to, to be more active in Slack. So those are the two Slacks that uh, I currently monitor. One is for Ionic and one is for Cordova. So if you have questions on getting started or finding things, or what is the latest version of something, go in and sign up for, for Slack. It's open to anyone. Uh, and join and ask questions. I think that Slack is becoming very popular. We're using it in IBM, so it's very, uh, very fast to get feedback and collaborate f f with folks. Um, and I went over. Yes, I told you. Any questions? Yeah, I'll hold two questions. First, uh, how flexible is the CSV framework to play on top of uh, Ionic to be customized? Because I know we cannot use uh, another uh, CSS framework tool like uh, Bootstrap. And the second question is in terms of uh, So the, the question was around how, how easy to customize. You're using SAS, so that, that theme that you did, you saw like uh, orange and purple. Uh, it was a two-liner. 
So they have a theme-based uh, SAS variables. So it's very easy to, to, to do. I think I have it um, under SCSS. If you go in here, you can see if you can see that I have one a Halloween theme and I have a Bluemix theme, and it, and it just change that and it change everything else like the buttons, the bars, and everything. So you can give it like your your own look and feel for for your app. So that's I wanted to try it out to see how difficult it was, and it, it was very simple. You do this, and then you run gulp gulp SAS, and then generates you the new SAS. And the other question about the desktop. Um, you saw that this is, um, I show the, the, the website. Right now it's possible to run all these uh, mobile apps uh, by going to the Android 10 members versus iOS users and iPhone users. Uh, I don't even consider it to um, build desktop apps too. Um, HTML5. I Ionic. Uh, this, this, uh, the JavaScript, the JavaScript is web based, so it, they, they work for uh, desktop. And uh, one example is Ionic Lab. If you go to the Ionic web framework and download the Ionic app Lab, it's a desktop app built with Ionic framework, and it's a desktop app to kind of use Ionic. It uh, runs on using Electron JS, okay. and, and you don't you cannot tell if it's a web app. Web app is it feels native, installs natively, it launches natively, and you cannot tell that it's a web app. Um, and it's very it has animation, so. The same CSS that they're doing, like the side menu, and the list, and the buttons, um, they it w works for uh, Windows, and I don't know if it works on Linux, but it works on Windows and Mac. Um, but for Cordova, uh, there's no official support for desktop. OS X is um, one that they, the, the, a contributor kind of fixed, and is up to date. Uh, but we're looking into using Electron JS to generate kind of a desktop app. Any more questions? I don't want to keep you guys, if you want to go to the closing remarks in the keynote. That's it, thank you.